Hello learners, I am Dr. Nidhi Mathur, teaching at Institute of Management Technology, Center for Distance Learning, Ghazabad. I have published several papers and taught various courses in tourism and travel management. In the last episode, you have discussed about accommodation. In this episode, we will talk about accessibility. Globally, it is estimated that there are over 1 billion persons with disabilities as well as more than 2 billion people such as spouses, children and caregivers of persons with disabilities representing almost a third of world's population who are directly affected by disability. While this signifies a huge potential market for travel and tourism, it still remains vastly underserved due to inaccessible travel and tourism facilities and services as well as discriminatory policies and practices. Now let us understand what is accessible tourism. Accessible tourism enables all people to participate in and enjoy tourism experiences. More people have access needs whether or not related to a physical condition. For example, older and less mobile people have access needs which can become a huge obstacle when traveling or touring. Thus. Accessible tourism is the ongoing endeavor to ensure tourist destinations, products and services are accessible to all people regardless of their physical limitations, disabilities or age. This include publicly and privately owned tourist locations, facilities and services. Accessible tourism involves a collaborative process among all stakeholders, governments, international agencies, tour operators and end users including persons with disabilities and their organization. A successful tourism product requires effective partnerships and cooperation across many sectors at the national, regional and international levels. From idea to implementation, a single destination visit normally involves many factors including accessing information, long distance travel of various sorts, local transportation, accommodation, shopping and dining. The impact of accessible tourism thus goes beyond the tourist beneficiaries to the wider society ingraining accessibility into the social and economic values of society. Now let us talk about the elements of accessibility. There are specific elements to be considered when designing for accessibility. All disabilities are different as are the people who live with them. While there is no such thing as perfection by considering the physical, sensory and communication aspects of accessibility, you can make a place much easier to get around. Here are some examples or ways 
in which tourism can promote accessibility. First is physical accessibility. The most evident type of accessibility is perhaps physical accessibility. Infrastructure and facilities that make it easier for people with disabilities to navigate and take use of tourist attractions are among them. Physical access includes being able to enter, move around in, utilize the amenities in and leave a building or site in a secured manner. This includes architectural features that facilitate easier movement within and around a space such as ramps and handrails. Emergency measures like evacuation zones and considerations for people, persons who might require assistance in an emergency are among the other physical access elements. Several instances include providing wheelchair, ramps and elevators in hotels and tourist attractions. Designing pathways and side walls that are wide enough to accommodate wheelchairs and mobility devices. Providing accessible transportation options such as wheelchair accessible taxis or buses. The next one is communication accessibility. The term communication access refers to how simple it is to communicate in a given setting. While we may take talking at a restaurant or store for granted, there are many people who regard this as a big challenge. Access to communication accessibility tools is crucial in all facets of tourism because of this. For example, a tour company may include a staff member who is proficient in ASL to assist clients who have hearing impairments or a hotel cafe could feature pictures or large writings that non-verbal customers could point to when placing their orders. This kind of thought is crucial for communication accessibility. Everyone has the right to feel understood and receive the necessities when traveling. Information must be presented in ways that are accessible to those with impairments as part of communication accessibility. Offering information in braille, large print or audio formats falls under this category. Examples of tourism related communication accessibility includes providing multilingual information about tourist destinations and services, supplying braille or big print versions of written information such as menus and brochures. For those who are blind, providing audio descriptions of popular tourist locations. The other one we will talk about is service accessibility. Training employees to deliver services that are accessible to people with disabilities is part of service accessibility. This includes making sure that employees are aware of accessibility concerns and are skilled at helping those who are disabled. Examples of tourist services that are accessible include training hotel staff to assist guests with disabilities with check-in and check-out procedures, training restaurant staff to provide assistance to customer with disabilities such as guiding them to a table or assisting with ordering, providing sign language interpreters or other communication aids for customers with hearing impairment, 
The last one is sensory accessibility. Sensory accessibility involves providing experiences that are accessible to people with sensory disabilities such as those with visuals or hearing impairments. Sensory access includes accommodations for those who may have sensory impairments or specific needs in order to interact with the facility. This includes considerations that offer additional audio or visual access to those with visual or hearing impairments. For example, movie theaters are required to supply captioning such as captioning smart glasses or stands for viewers with hearing impairments. Other sensory access accommodations include providing audio guides or descriptive videos for people with visual impairments at tourist locations, providing sign language interpreters or captioning for people with hearing impairment at tourist attractions and events, creating tactile exhibits and displays for people with visual impairments. Vision or hearing impairments are not the only reason why someone might need sensory access accommodations. People with autism or sensory processing disorders may also need this kind of accommodation when they are in a new place or having a new experience. Let's discuss about the locations where accessibility is essential. Accessibility is crucially important when it comes to matters of safety, comfort and personal hygiene. Airports, lodging facilities, public bathrooms, dining establishments and transportation facilities are just a few of these locations. Accessibility should be taken into account by other attractions as well, particularly when it comes to the safety of its visitors such as theme parks, museums and sightseeing sites. Additional factors to be considered for accessibility. The minimal, minimum and far from comprehensive accessibility considerations are provided by the legal requirements. Other ways that tourist destinations can increase accessibility and mobility include offering wireless headphones to enhance tours having staff members who are fluent in ASL, displaying lots of signages, installing large entrance restroom stalls, lowering the heights of sinks and water fountains, and strategically placing benches and rest areas. Many of these changes will not only increase accessibility, but may also enhance the experience of visitors who are not disabled. A cornerstone of the accessible design communities is what is known as universal design. Considering accessibility when vacationing. Additionally, it is critical for passengers to contribute to the ease and enjoyment of their own journeys. Consider your needs when picking a hotel. For instance, if you or anyone in your group needs accommodations, but there is no need that form must be completely sacrificed to function. Although having an accessible shower and being fashionable shouldn't be equated there are ways to identify fashionable hotels that are also accessible. Choosing your mode of transportation is yet another crucial aspect of traveling. The majority of public transit options including subways and buses have designated areas for wheelchairs and other mobility aids. But 
smaller vehicles like cabs and Ubers might not. To have a more enjoyable trip, make travel arrangement in advance. It helps to expand experiences for people from all walks of life. When businesses like tourism are geared towards accessible and universal design, tourists and the industry as a whole will profit from this. In December 2006, the UN General Assembly approved the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Article 9 of RPD which addresses accessibility requires state parties to take the necessary steps to guarantee that people with disabilities have equal access to the built environment, information, transportation and other facilities and services that are accessible to the general public. It also calls for the removal of all transportation and facility barriers as well as other roadblocks to accessibility. Additionally, Article 30 on participation in cultural life, recreation, leisure and sport requires state parties to make sure that people with disabilities can benefit from tourism. The link between disability and development was examined at the 2013 historic UN High Level Summit on Disability and Development in which several heads of state attended. The meeting advocated for increased action to mainstream disability in the global development agenda. Accessibility was noted as a crucial topic for attention in the meeting's final statement. Additionally, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon urged the world community to make towns and communities accessible to everyone in his message for World Habitat Day 2013 statement. Making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable is the focus of goal 11 of the Sustainable Development Goals 2015, which was recently adopted by the world leaders. With its appeal for inclusive urbanism, access to green areas, and universal design for accessible and sustainable transportation networks, this objective encompasses tourism and recreation. The United Nations World Tourism Organization UNWTO forecast that tourism will grow and see continuous development reaching 1.8 billion mentioned travelers by 2030 in its 2011 declaration. In order to promote the complete social and economic inclusion of all people, accessible cities and tourism offerings also requires that consumers adopt more environmental friendly travel practices. What obstacles do people with impairments face when traveling and visiting places? Traveling can be difficult for people with disabilities since it can be challenging, expensive and time consuming to discover information on accessible services, check bags on a plane and book a lodging that meets access requirements. Disability related obstacles for people with disabilities include professional personnel that are not educated to advise and counsel on accessibility concerns, lack of accessible airports, transfer facilities and services, accessibility issues with booking services and connected websites, lack of accessible hotel rooms, restaurants, shops, restrooms and public spaces, 
impossible to access street and transportation options. A lack of knowledge about accessible facilities, services, equipment, rentals and tourism attractions. So what makes accessible travel crucial? Any responsible and sustainable growth strategy must prioritize accessibility. It is a crucial issue for human rights as well as a fantastic commercial opportunity. In this situation, accessible travel benefits not just people with impairments but the entire community. It is necessary for tourist destinations to adopt the universal design principle in order to ensure that all people regardless of their physical or cognitive needs are able to use and enjoy the available amenities in an equitable and sustainable manner. This will help to ensure that accessible tourism is developed in a way that is sustainable. By allowing unrestricted use of facilities and services by all at any time with equitable results, this strategy abandons preferential or segregated treatment of constituents with disabilities. How does this affect someone like me who does not have a disability? Realizing the rights of the aging population of the world requires consideration of accessibility. Our likelihood of developing a temporary or permanent handicap rises with age. We may therefore guarantee that we can participate fully in our societies well into our later years by putting an emphasis on accessibility. Pregnant ladies and anyone temporarily unable to move benefit from accessibility as well. In addition to encouraging a more multi-generational focus in development planning, a focus on accessibility leads to improvement in the physical and service infrastructure. Families with young children are better able to engage in social and cultural events when there is accessible infrastructural, especially in the areas of transportation, municipal planning and building design. Sustainable and equitable development is a priority for the United Nations. Increased visitor numbers can undoubtedly be achieved by making simple improvement to a facility, giving correct information and taking into account the requirement of those with disabilities. Enhancing the accessibility of tourism services improves their quality and enjoyment for all visitors as well as standard of living in the surrounding areas. There are around 27% of household with at least one senior citizen or 104 million seniors aged 60 or more according to the 2011 census. Similar to China when there are about 26.8 million people with disabilities, 8.8 3-4% of household in India includes at least one person with disability member. Since the person with disability population is thought to be 5 to 8 times larger than what was reported in the census of 2011, this estimate is probably conservative. Additionally, 3.03 million international visitors to India in 2018 were 55 years of age or older or nearly 30% of all foreign visitors. The tourism sector needs to take these figures into account. Globally accessible tourism is a significant industry. This market in the United States is thought to be valued at 34.6 billion US dollars according to a 2015 report by Open Doors organization. 
the European Network for Accessible Tourist ENAT estimated the European accessibility tourism sector to be worth pound 150 billion that is 166 billion US dollars in 2015. A lot of cities including London and Paris have improved accessibility while preserving a feeling of place and identity despite having a mix of old and new infrastructure. It would be wise to follow these examples. In India, the Ministry of Tourism includes a few rules in the draft national tourism policy 2015 and the sustainable tourism criteria for India 2016 to increase the accessibility of the tourism sector. A growing number of Indian business people are attempting to open up tourism to all. The founder of Planet Abled is Neha Arora who had disabled parents growing up. The company arranges accessible tours both within the country and abroad. It offers cutting edge amenities like portable ramps to make historic sites accessible for those with locomotor disabilities and 3D replicas of monument to let visitors with visual impairments enjoy the architecture. For accessible tourism to flourish, the government and other sector players still have a lot of work to do. The seven suggestions are meant to increase the accessibility of the Indian tourism industry and are based on consultation with frequent travelers with accessibility needs and worldwide best practices. So number one is increase industry actors knowledge of prospects for accessible tourism. Number two, develop universal design and accessible tourism guidelines for travel and tour companies, lodging establishments and tourist locations. Third, by emphasizing the benefits to the economy, persuade service providers to invest in accessible tourism. Fourth, to make the top 15 Indian tourist circuits more accessible, publish a route map. Number five, enable industry experts to give world-class service to visitors with accessibility needs by conducting training and awareness programs for them. Number six, encourage industry participants to market accessible travel in their marketing materials. Number seven, most importantly, actively involve women senior citizen, people with disabilities and other stakeholders throughout the phases of user requirement, discovery and design implementation and assessment of the aforementioned six accommodations. Many of us are more likely to encounter living with a disability at some time in our lives as a result of longer life expectancies. In addition, because young individuals are expected to take care of their elderly parents or seniors will continue to be a part of families. At various times during our lives, each of us will require varying degrees of accessibility. Accessible tourism will thereby raise the caliber of our collective travel experiences. The nation has a chance to strengthen accessibility policies and broaden inclusivity in the tourism sector as we approach National Tourism Day. India will be able to access a dollar one billion growth engine as a result. As Kerala becomes the first state in India to become elderly and disabled friendly by putting in place all the fundamental infrastructure and services at tourism centers. There is some good news for those with special needs who are battling to fulfill their ambitions of traveling. 
The third and final phase of the Barrier Free Kerala Tourism Project which was started in 2019 but had to be put on hold owing to the COVID-19 outbreak was ultimately finished in January 2021 with more than 100 locations becoming senior and disabled friendly. In addition, Kerala has now implemented the UN World Tourism Organization's request for tourism for all as the country's first state. The organizations attempting to make the nation's capital more accessible for visitors with special needs provide a silver lining to the gloomy clouds of accessibility. A Delhi-based company called Planet Abled offers accessible travel options and recreational outings for people with a range of disabilities. Despite the fact that there are over a billion individuals with various disabilities in the world, very few of them travel due to dearth of accessible transport options. Planet Able saw this gap and stepped up to close it by enabling everyone regardless of disability to travel. According to their website, we offer something special, safe and pleasant for them whether they want to explore a tiny portion of the city they are in or want to travel across many locations of their interest. Another NGO, Swayam, also advocates for the rights of people with disabilities. A Swayam member claims that the organization has put pressure on state governments to make public places or spaces accessible to both the elderly and people with disabilities. To conclude this episode, we have discussed accessibility in tourism which refers to the provision of facilities and services that enable people with disabilities, seniors and those with other accessibility needs to participate in and enjoy travel and tourism experiences. The aim of accessibility is to ensure that tourism is inclusive and accessible to all regardless of their abilities or disabilities. There are many benefits to promoting accessibility in tourism. In addition to the social benefit of inclusivity and equal opportunity, accessible tourism also has economic benefits. By making tourism accessible, it expands the market and attracts a wide range of customers which can boost revenues for tourism businesses and destinations. Accessibility in tourism is essential for ensuring that everyone has equal opportunities to participate in and enjoy travel and tourism experiences. By promoting accessibility, the tourism industry can expand its customer base, boost revenues and create more inclusive and sustainable tourism destinations. Thank you and goodbye.